全然変わったね今のスタイルはちょっとおしゃれ女の子大人っぽいのスタイルがいいえうん sorry Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have decided to title this video like moving back to Japan diaries or something. I have no idea, but today is part one. So it's the preparation and all of that before I move to Japan. In today's video, we're gonna do with quite a lot of things to do today. I have to submit the last few information uh, for my school's application and then, oh, sorry. And then we're gonna do some book unhauling because I've got lots of books and I only want to be keeping books that I, you know, I want to clear them out well as much as I can before I go to Japan because I won't be bringing all of them to Japan with me of course and I will still be leaving some of my books here but you know I just thought it would be nice to just organize and clear out some of my books of course we're gonna also clear out a little bit of my wardrobe because sorry that's Elizabeth <laughs> yeah we're just gonna clear a little bit of that so that's what we're gonna do today so yeah that's just gonna be part one let's just get started we'll do the applications first before we do the books and everything else so let's go so I have an uncle who's living in Japan and I have to fill in his information so I'm gonna fill in the ones that um, I can in front of you and then I'll fill the rest in by myself of course yes okay so I'm gonna flip the camera around to fill in the address hi <laughs> this is my squid my squishmallow I know he's so cute he's obviously coming to Japan with me but anyways I've got my computer here we're on the sofa bed like sofa bed yep okay so my uncle's address this is the final step before I submit I've already submitted actually and then they came back saying that they needed more information so the school will come back to me and wanted four weeks time so in about a month latest it's still really messy still because after that I would have to go to the um, Japanese embassy here and get my visa sorted out let me know if you need anything else okay i come back in okay guys we're gonna send it send. yay 100 percent complete oh okay we're done with that let's do my books now shall we okay i actually don't know how i'm gonna film this basically i have got a little mini bookshelf here and i'm going to try to unhaul as many books as i can i do have a booktube channel which i am planning to upload the same exact video but i will also be going to a, a free library somewhere nearby and uh donating these books and also getting some new books from the free library so if you want to watch that if you are interested in more bookish content i'll put the link to my booktube channel um, in the description box Below. On the first shelf here, we have The Hating Game. Yeah, I was actually reading this like a couple of pages in, but then October started and the vibes just changed. I was in my romance era, but October came and I just wanted more spooky vibes. I have heard mixed reviews about this. People have said that this is really good, but then I've also had people tell me that they absolutely hated it. So I don't know, we shall see. But yes, I'm keeping it, of course. If it's below four stars, I will probably give it away. Then we have Skin of the Sea, which I've tried reading two times now, but I'm just not in the mood for it. But again, I don't want to give it away because this is about a mermaid. <laughs> a mermaid and she's like a person of color and I, I love that. I like the whole um, tribal native mermaid vibe, like warrior mermaid vibe. So this one I'm going to be unfolding my lesbian experience with loneliness. I don't understand it. I really don't. I love the colors, the inside. It's like pink, you know, it's like pink manga. It's so cute. It also delves into some deeper topics about sexual orientation, mental health and illnesses and all that. And again, I'm not, I, I can't relate to that. So yes, I will be unholding this one. Hopefully someone from the free library will pick this up and like it. So Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which obviously I'm not going to be giving away. This is stunning. It's Gryffindor edition as well. So mine forever. We have Awaken the Giant Within. This was my dad's and I'm currently reading it at the moment. It's a really good book, but I've stopped halfway. God knows why, but it's still really good and I do want to read it. So this one is so good. Saving Grace by Jane Green. Yeah, I want to reread it someday. Look at that. How am I ever gonna throw this away? This is stunning. And then we have a couple of my favorite books 
books. Obviously, not gonna be throwing those away. We have, I think that's the City of Dusk. The City of Dusk. We have Babel. That I'm um, very pretty, obviously. Not throwing that. We have Book of Night by Holly Black. The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. These are all fairly good editions. Oh, this one. I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna read this, honestly. It's not like high up on my list. I have come to realize that I only want to read books that I really, really, really want to read. You know what I mean? So, Saints and Misfits by SK Ollie and Holling. We have An Error to the Moon. This is a beautiful uh, Romeo and Juliet retelling. This one has really nice prose. Let me just read the first sentence for you guys. Once upon a time, there was a girl who lived on the moon as its guardian. She was its heart and its breath. I know. Obviously, <laughs> keeping that one. Next, we have my favorite contemporary romance. <laughs> this is The Love Hypothesis and it's turning into a movie which I'm super excited. <sighs> ah, by Ali Hazelwood. This one I'm actually going to be bringing to Japan with me. Never ever going to be throwing this one away. I will probably get a hot cover of this as well just to collect because this is my absolute favorite, 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 favorite <laughs> contemporary romance ever. This gives me so much serotonin. I'm just so happy. Anyways, yep, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I'm not throwing away as well. Oh, when I say throw away, I mean unholing. But yes, we have this one, The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Ooh, Stephanie Meyer. Wow, I had no idea. But again, I'm not interested in this. It has like dystopian vibes. And I'm just... No, I don't think I will ever pick this up. <laughs> it might be a good book, but I just don't think I will ever pick this up. I have so many more books that I want to pick up, so yeah. If you guys are interested, this is the book that I'm currently reading. Belladonna by Adeline Grace. Anyways, we have Ransom Riggs by Map of Days. Obviously never, ever, ever, ever getting rid of my Ransom Riggs books. Excuse me, like this is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I also have it signed, so. Also, by the way, it's really messy, the shelves, because I have yet to organize them. I just literally just chuck all the books here. We have Heart of Flames, which is the second book in the Crown of Feathers trilogy. Obviously, not throwing it away. We have Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Obviously, never throwing her away. Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is my favorite retelling of um, the Chinese folktale, Chang Er. Only a Monster by Vanessa Lin. Keeping that. To Sleep in the Sea of Stars. Kingdom of the Wicked. Stunning. J.K. Rowling's uh, Fantastic Beast Stingy. It's my Waterfire Saga series. My favorite mermaid series of all time. Three Harry Potter books here. These two I'm going to be unhauling. The Kingdom. I rated this one a three star, I think. And basically, this is about AI robots. Artificial intelligence robots. In this beautiful, fantastic uh, theme park. And one of them actually starts to do things out of what they were being programmed to do. So they're starting to think a little bit more human-like. Yeah. I didn't really like the ending as much. It was okay. Next, we have Putney. <laughs> now, if you guys have been on my Instagram a long time ago, you guys will know. I bought this, obviously, because I love strawberries. And I bought this one thinking it was really cute because of this giant strawberry in the cover. But the story... If you guys have read Lolita, this is like the same. So it's about grooming, basically. This old man that was grooming a kid and like having sex with her and... It was so bad, literally. It's not the best, it's really it's really not good. I didn't find the writing beautiful or spectacular in any way. Um, the story was boring, it just wasn't executed right, in my opinion. And then we have House of Leaves. I stopped like right in the middle of this, and then I just couldn't continue. It's such a hard book to get through, but I am determined to give it a try again until I finish the entire book. If you guys have never heard of House of Leaves, this book was deemed the scariest book in the world. This book is so hard to read. Sometimes you have pages just filled with words like this, and then other times it's like this. You have to take a mirror, put the mirror here in order to read it. It's this whole thing is a puzzle. Sometimes you have to go all around it, and you have to go in between pages, back and forth, up and down. Just, it's a puzzle. And look, look at this. What, what is that? It's like this entire page, and then you have a, a dot. They also have a page purely with like musical sheets and scores. If you play an instrument, you can play it out just to figure out the story further. And it's just, it's a mystery, this book. I want to, obviously want to read it again. Yeah, and then we have more of my Miss Peregrine books and the same ones here. The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Um, I think I rated this one a four star, so keep it going. Now we're gonna move on to this one, this shelf over here, so we'll see. The Picture of Dorian Gray 
never ever getting rid of it. This is a great, great, one of my favorite, favorite classics. It's so good. The Forbidden Sea by Sheila Nielsen. Uh, I think I will be unholding this one. Emergency Contact which unfortunately I don't like it that much but I kind of want to keep it for the aesthetic so The Great Gatsby I've read a little bit can you see like a little pink tab I will never throw away classics so I got this one years ago but um, I never ever picked it up this is a Christmas book but every time during Christmas they're just better Christmassy books to read and usually in the Christmas time I love reading Harry Potter <laughs> The Christmas Carol and like small town romance books but this I just never picked up so unfortunately I will be unholding this then of course we have Shine by Jessica Jung which unfortunately I didn't like this book. Um, I might give her second book a try because I think the second book sounds a little bit more interesting than this one. I don't like this one. It reads like a children's book. I don't like the writing style. I think it's a little bit too cringy. Oh, but the aesthetics though, it will look so good on my shelves because it's like pink. I don't know. I might keep it just for the aesthetics. I'm so sorry. I don't actually like the book and I will never ever read this again. In the future, once I have my pink bookshelves and once I have accumulated enough pink books, I will be on hauling. For now, I'm just gonna be keeping it for the aesthetics. This one I will be unhauling. This is Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. But it's about two people, two broken people, working at a bookstore and they write letters to each other in the books. Doing that eventually leads to the both of them healing each other's trauma and wounds. And it just sounds amazing. It sounds so emotional, so beautiful. But the ending of this book was just, yeah, it didn't do anything for me. So unhauling the girl who fell beneath the sea. Never, ever unhauling that. Just look at this. Why would you ever unhold that? crazy. Pride and Prejudice. This is the Penguin English Library one. Never ever throwing that away because Mr. Darcy, hello. We have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. Keeping it. I might want to reread this. So we have Stereo Eyes by Jen Bennett. It's not my favorite but it's a, it's cute. It's a cute, well-written, light-hearted romance which is so nice to read in the summertime. Especially in the summertime because um, I think this book is based around like camping and then she gets lost um, in the jungle with, with the boy and and basically they try to survive in the wilderness together and obviously things happen. This one I will be unhauling. This is How to Keep a Boy from Kissing You by Tara Eglinton. Unhauling. Six Crimson Cranes. Never unhauling this. So good. Five out of five stars. Can't wait to get the second book. The Dragon Promise. The Boy in Striped Pajamas. So good. If you guys don't know, this is about the Holocaust. We have In Order to Live by Pak Yeon Mi. So good. I think I might unhold this one because I just never picked it up. I'm just not obsessed with it. There's just so many books that I want to read that I don't think I will ever want to read this one. I'm going to be unholding this unfortunately. I think someone else will appreciate this more than me. We have Eat, Pray, Love which I want to read. I really really do because I have heard about this book so many times and it's being referenced in so many different movies. Um, especially The Big Bang Theory. Raj from The Big Bang Theory is always quoting things from um, Eat, Pray, Love and this was also uh, adapted into a film starring Julia Roberts. This one I will be unhauling. I read this book and it's nothing like nothing that I would want to come back to and reread. Next we have Why the Rich Are Getting Richer which is a horrible book. I think I rated this a one or a two star. Don't read this. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's horrible. Um, we have some Jane Austen books. Persuasion and Sense and Sensibility. Obviously keeping these because you always learn so much from classics which I love. So we're done with this bookshelf but I do have some other books in the drawer and all that we're gonna clear out those books too um so we have these books here and then a couple more here so i'm gonna take all these books down and then we'll have a little sort through this is the kiss quotient by han huang uh i think i rated this a three star i mean it is a cute love story but i just it wasn't for me because everything it was just about sex very physical with very little emotional um connection and for me i need that i need that emotional connection first i like the whole pride and prejudice kind of very innocent wholesome romance like touching hands holding hands cuddling hugging kissing and all that and not just like bam sex so this book was just literally from chapter one all the way it's just sex it's just sex and lust and it's just not my thing. I did enjoy it, but I wasn't 
obsessed and i don't think i will ever want to read this one again so kingdom of the curse five out of five stars of course this is my favorite fantasy romance kingdom of the curse is the second book in the kingdom of the wicked trilogy my favorite i obviously i'm still waiting for the third book kingdom of the fiat i can't wait to read it oh my goodness heroes of olympus the lost hero this was my brother's this is part of the percy jackson um series but if i'm not wrong this one actually follows the son of zeus instead of the son of poseidon because percy is the son of poseidon this one actually follows the son of zeus i know if you guys didn't know, I love Greek mythology, so I can't wait to get started on the Song of Achilles and there's so many more. We have another stack of books. This one I will be unhauling. I bought this when I was really young. I think my mom bought it. And I really don't like it when I see covers like this. Like when there's like a naked man or like a naked woman or you know, something like this. It just screams erotica to me. I do like to read books like this, sometimes on my Kindle or an ebook, but I don't think I want to own a physical copy of just like a man. He's on both sides as well. I'm holding this. A totally awkward love story. I will be unholding this because it just wasn't great. Next we have to all the boys I loved before. I don't think I will ever pick this up unfortunately so I'm not a huge fan of the TV series either so I don't know why I'm holding on to it. Maybe it's the cover. Maybe I do like the cover. I think the cover is pretty. Also not a fan of Peter. Is that his name? There's just so many better book fictional men than Peter so I know books with Chloe really like it but she likes a lot of other books that I don't like as well. So we have different reading tastes I think. Yeah I'm gonna unhaul this. I'm sorry. These ones I am going to be keeping all of them. I'm just gonna quickly show you what they are. The Spanish Love Deception, 5 out of 5 stars, The Vicious Grace, Her Gift Can Save or It Can Kill. Very pretty book. We have this one as well, which I'm very excited to read. This is Twin Crowns. First of all, look at the cover. Oh, but basically this is about two twin princesses who were separated at birth, battling for the crown. Basically two sisters fighting for one crown and purple and gold is just screaming royalty to me so i might bring this to japan with me dark academia witchcraft spooky vibes so i might read this this month the stardust steve i've tried reading twice but i wasn't in the mood for it so i had to put it down for last but not least we have everybody knows him this is mr steve jobs his story is very inspirational and there's lots of things that you can learn i'm a sucker for apple so <laughs> keeping it that is all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these will be coming with me to the free library. Hopefully I can find 12 other books in exchange for these books. But if we can't, then we'll just get whatever. I am just planning to donate these anyways. So if you guys want to see more, you can head over to my booktube channel. But yes, that is that. Right now I'm going to cut to the part where I am <laughs> unholing some of my clothes. So yeah. Thank you. Neko this. The glare in my glasses. Today we'll be decluttering some of my daily clothes. So on my bed, it's actually it's a lot. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab, grab and go. This is from Fila. I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna wear it again. Also, decluttering side goes here. Clothes I'm gonna keep uh, will be here. Maybe I'll give it to one of my siblings. So I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. Maybe pile goes on the bed. Red cardigan, keep. This beautiful top. This one I'm also going to keep. So these two are going to the other room. These are kind of casual, pretty daily dresses that I will use sometimes when I want to go out. This one is from Tuota. This one is from Lyrica. Uh, oh, this one is really pretty. This one is from Needle and Thread. And this one is from Selkie. It's, it's a puff dress. I have this one. It's from years ago. This one has to go. I also have to change all of the hangers. Right now they're like this annoying, ugly color. And I just want everything to be white or pink or just silver. These are actually not even mine. I think these are my brothers. This is going to a thrift shop. This one I'm keeping. Super cute, I love this. A pretty cardigan with roses as buttons. What is this? Oh, my ballet wrap skirt. So I used to be a ballet um, student, Royal Academy of Dance. Shout out. This one is gonna go, I'm so sorry. A couple of years ago, I actually really liked this one and I actually, <laughs> I, had, I actually made a video about it, like one of my Yesda hauls, I think I hauled this and I said it was really really pretty But now that I'm going for a more uh, elegant feminine style, it just doesn't... Nope um, And also it's not that great of a quality, so trying to refine my style and that's just not it Pretty long dress, like a picnic, 
a wedding, whatever, and there's a huge cutout at the back, which is really pretty. Definitely keeping this one. One of my favorite elegant tops to wear. White with a black outline at the back, it's got a ribbon. Very tacky body con dress with lots of questionable uh, cutouts and rouging at the ass area. Uh, declutter. <laughs> it doesn't look as nice on the body as it does over here so i'm going to declutter this one a basic dress shirt every person i feel should have a basic dress shirt male or female so i love wearing this with a jumper this one declutter what is this even what is that this one you've seen me wear in a couple of my videos but unfortunately it doesn't match my current style i cannot ever see myself going back to like streetwear ever again so unless when i'm dancing but even when i'm dancing i don't want to be wearing this declutter it's not very comfortable as well it's actually really uncomfortable so this one definitely gonna be keeping so i do like to wear this on its own these ones obviously keeping because they fit my style this is a turtleneck dress obviously also gonna be keeping this is my color I am still a collector of strawberries, but I will not, I will never wear this. It's just not me anymore. <laughs> it used to be me, which is so weird. Like this used to be a Yodi style. <laughs> so this actually comes with a matching pair of trousers. It looks really elegant together. I bought this one when I first started reading books because I wanted to give off that librarian I dark academia vibe. Absolutely love that aesthetic even until now. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this one. Ah, uh, this one. I used to be obsessed with this one. I wore it all the time. Um, I don't, I don't feel it anymore, <laughs> which is so weird. We have one really pretty dress really really pretty dress which i'm never going to declutter next we have this which i love i have this in every color but unfortunately i got this in the wrong size so i will be decluttering this this is actually my favorite pair of trousers i wear this daily very very beautiful i got this dress from a russian brand yeah very nice cotton material and it's very heavy and it just flows very very nice this is going away for sure. It doesn't even fit anymore. My waist is, has gotten a lot smaller, so this doesn't fit anymore. And it's such an ugly color. I don't like this color. This one I'm gonna keep. It's very classy, very elegant. I love it. Yes, oh, that is it. So I'm decluttering these ones and this one, of course. This one. So all of these ones, I will be decluttering. Once that is all done, um, when it is time to pack for Japan, I will come back again with another video. Um, packing for Japan. And that one's gonna be stressful. So yeah, that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I hear back from the school uh, really quick. Yeah, and then we will get started with doing all the other necessary preparations that I have to do before I go back to Japan. So yes, that would be really, really fun. Literally, I can't wait for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this chaotic vlog. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because there will be more videos coming very soon since I'll be moving back to Japan. But yes, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Look at my skin, guys. It's so good. My skin has been improving so much. I'm not buying foundation. <laughs> I know, amazing.